Greetings everyone, it is Stokecraft and welcome back to at last another video on this channel And it's been a freaking while and I know I've said that loads of times on this channel But I'm a busy guy, that's just what it is As you guys might know, I attend university at the moment For the people that don't know, I study aerospace engineering Which is just an amazing study But also it is one of the most busy studies available for me right now so i do really want to do well at that university that's why i spent a lot of time doing my university education throughout the week but as important as uh, university and education is for you having a break and just relaxing is just as important maybe not spending as much time on the relaxation all the all of it uh, yeah all the time as i should say but you haven't seen a video from me for a while and that had one particular reason and that is just because i've been very busy but also i did really want to make a video for you guys in the last few weeks but the thing is i haven't played world of tanks in a long time so that meant that i don't have any material really to show on the channel i didn't have any good replays i didn't have any funny things that happened in the game i just had nothing to showcase so that's why i uh, desperately tweeted out last week and if you don't follow me on Twitter make sure you do because I keep you guys updated with everything that's going on and that's going to be important for you as a viewer of my channel so if you want to check it out at Tokraf10 that is my Twitter account also you can contact me directly on the Twitter account for yeah whatever reason maybe you want to talk to me it doesn't really matter at Tokraf10 make sure you give it a follow you guys all know how social media works right so I won't bother you too much with that as I said last week, I desperately tweeted out that I was going to need some replays from my Twitter followers or some subscribers that follow me on Twitter to make a subscriber replays episode because that hasn't been done in a very long time either. So I thought that is the perfect opportunity for me to be able to make a video for you guys this weekend. And as we can see, we do have a replay and the almighty indignant beaver sent me a replay of his. Uh, very active guy on Twitter. He also likes a lot of my posts. Thank you very much for that It's really amazing to see how could you support me on Twitter and on my YouTube channel as well You had some really nice comments on the, under my videos in the few last ones And I'm really happy to feature one of his replays because he is a very competent player I believe he plays on the NA server. Don't quote me on that though. I'm not sure but uh, yeah, he, he I think he plays on the NA server and as we can see he is playing in a Sheridan the tier 10 American light tank, which is just a tank that I've never ever featured on this channel Let alone any of the tier 10 light tanks with regards to me I am not even close to one of the tier 10 light tanks as I said not playing world of tanks in a while But literally focusing up on the game here just a little as we can see Indignant beaver starts off with a little bit of plastic Basic, basic, what the hell am I saying? Passive scouting, and therefore it manages to get into a bush. But when he fires, he gives his position away, which means that he loses over about two thirds of his health, which is unfortunate. But as I was saying, I am not even close to one of the tier 10 light tanks, mainly because I just don't play World of Tanks that much anymore, as I want to, of course, because I do want to play the game and I still love it a lot. But uh, I think my highest tier light tank at the moment is the WZ132. The tier 8 Chinese light tank, but the thing is that thing is entirely stock and I haven't played a single game in that tank. The tank has just been collecting dust in my garage for I don't even know how long I've got the tank already. Probably maybe one and a half years, so that's pretty long. But anyway, I would really like to pick up one of these tier 10 light tanks because their mobility is just absolutely insane. As we can see, the what the tier 10 light tanks do lack is... yeah is game capacity so to say fighting capacity because their accuracy is absolutely shit their dpm is shit pretty much everything that you wouldn't want on the light tank the tier 10 light tanks have with regards to their fighting capacity which is just a little bit sad but as we can see doesn't that doesn't hold indignant beaver for having a good impact in the team so far he's going after a wz 111 14 as we can see he is doing a very fantastic job with his team, as we can see. Uh, and I do really like the look of this tank. So guys, do you let me know what you think about the look of this tank as well. This just looks absolutely amazing. So we can see the WZ111 managed to sneak past Indignant Beaver there. No idea how he managed to pull that off. But he's going to be very careful. Uh, whoa! What a shot by the enemy artillery. I did not expect that whatsoever. What a shot. That meant that the Indignant Beaver had to be spotted, which he was, of course. His sixth sense went off when he dug down. 
uh, below the ridge. But still, that lead by that uh, uh, M5355 is just... Wow. Good shot by him there. As we can see, Indignant Beaver do wants to avoid getting shot by this 111-14. Luckily, he manages to do so as the 111-14 fires. And his team and him manage to finish him off, which is very, very good indeed. As we can see, everyone. It is 7-10 to 10 for the enemy team at the moment. They're in the lead. But it doesn't look that good at all. As we can see, one of his teammates dies as well. And his platoon mate in the bed jet 15558 has already been destroyed as well. And the Dignity Beaver is doing everything in his power to save the last artillery of his. Unfortunately, he doesn't manage to do so. Yeah, but well, what are you going to do when two light tanks rush in for the artillery, right? That's pretty much unstoppable. From experience, I know how much light tank drivers like to uh, just go in after the enemy artillery, right? But anyway, as we can see, there's only three of the allied tanks left, in including Indignant Beaver, as we can see. Uh, and as we can see, these two enemy tanks are fighting off the E-50M and the light tanks that have gotten into his base. So Indignant Beaver pulls off a very smart play here. He's going to... Yeah, he's going to spot the end of this corridor because he recognizes that his team is pretty much caught in a corridor. So he wants to keep the enemy... Yeah, he wants to... To hold their back so to say so he checks behind there and he sees that there's a t95 and an object 261 but a waffen trigger pencil force already sneaked by indignant beaver so he immediately goes after him to take him down it looks like the waffen trigger pencil force isn't really uh yeah taking his attention to indignant beaver luckily he's not because that means that indignant beaver manages to take him out but that means that the waffen trigger pencil force takes down the other Waffle Trigger Pencil 4 on Indignant Beaver's team. And now it's just this STRV 1030 and Indignant Beaver versus the world. As we can see, six enemy tanks versus D2 ally tanks. And they're going to fight really well together. So Indignant Beaver is focusing on the light tank at the moment. And he's probably going to take down the E50M right now. Because this, the STRV manages to kill the light tank. Which is a very nice result. And they both managed to pull this off. So now they're only the T95. And three SPGs on the enemy team are left. But luckily Indignant Beaver is still alive. Because this mobility and this end game situation is just absolutely perfect. Beautiful shot on the move right there. That's just an absolutely ridiculous shot. Because we know that the fighting capacity of these tanks isn't that good whatsoever. Luckily he does manage to take that guy down. So, only three enemy tanks left. So, together with that STRV, they pretty much killed three of the enemy. Which is a very good result, of course. They're heavily outnumbered at the moment. And if they can pull this off, this game, then it's just going to be absolutely ridiculous. So, let's see. The T-95 has been spotted on the other side of the corridor. Just like the Object 261. But Indignant Beaver isn't hanging around, as we can see. He is going to use, make full use of his mobility. And he's going to flank around. Because for all that we know, the, T the T95 might have gone anywhere. As we know, the T95 is very slow. So it's very, very <laughs> doubtful that the T95 <laughs> tried to chase a Dignant Beaver and the STRV. And another reason why I wanted to feature this replay on the channel. I might go on a little bit off topic here. Doesn't really matter. As we can see in the chat, the team is really well communicating with each other. And if this is the NA server, I don't know if this is just an example of uh, what the toxicity uh, of that server is like every time. But if there's pretty much no toxicity in this game as well. So that's just amazing as well. Indignant Beaver going after the enemy artillery as we can see. He's playing very carefully which is very good. Because for all he knows the T95 might have set up an ambush somewhere else on the map. As he is very slow we don't really know what the T95 has got uh, for a plan so to say. Let's see. The object 261 is also spotted in the middle of the field. So it's very... Uh, yeah, it's not very likely that he's going to be behind the base here. He might be though. So let's see what is going to happen. Indignant Beaver just trying to eliminate all the locations where the enemy artillery could be hiding. Which is a good case, of course. Because if, the, if he knows where the other enemy artillery is, then the SCRV knows that as well. And they're just playing really, really well together. Oh, and there we go. One of the positions of the enemy tanks is given away. As we can see there's one enemy tank in his cap circle. Is it going to be the T95, the Object 261 or the M5355? Only time will tell. 
But let's see how Indignant Beaver is going to handle the situation. Because there's still three enemy tanks left. And the T-95 and the artillery could be anywhere at this point. So he does have to be very careful with what he does here. Okay, so the T-95 has been spotted there. He's got his rear pointed to Indignant Beaver. Very nice. So he puts, he puts a clean shot into there. That means that one of the artillery is capping. Just to let you know. T-95 has got unspotted there. Not quite sure how that guy got unspotted. And how he is not being spotted anymore by Indignant Beaver. Because yeah, the tier 10 light tanks do have very good view range. Which is logical of course. Because it is a tier 10 light tank after all. But uh, Indignant Beaver decides that he's not going to faff around with the T-95. He's going to try and reset the cap from the corridor position. From which the STRV... And uh, Indignant Beaver here pulled off a massive, massive graveyard as we can see. There we go. The M5355 has been spotted. And he resets the cat with a beautiful shot into the top of that artillery piece. Very, very good right there. This is just going to be a clean kill. Oh my god. The M5355 actually manages to return one shot at Indignant Beaver. Luckily it misses. Uh, and it doesn't do any damage to Indignant Beaver. Indignant Beaver did get stunned there. But that has been uh, that problem has been solved by one push of the four button or the four, the four key, so to say. He uses his med kit there. So the SCRV and Indignant Beaver both decide that it's not going to be very effective if they're going to be still engaging the try the T95 from the same position, and that might actually be the good choice. But for all he knows, the T95 might be rushing right at him. Well, <laughs> rushing. You're not really r gonna rush in a T95, right? But you guys know what I mean, I guess. So Indignant Beaver, again, is going to make full use of his mobility. He's going to flank around all the way. And hopefully the T95 and wherever the 261 might be, hopefully they don't expect that. As we can see on the map, the SDRV is going into the enemy cap circle. With my, which might be a very good choice at this moment. Because if Indignant Beaver can scout out the map and eliminate the positions of the enemy tanks... It is very likely that uh, they will know for sure if they can cap out this game or not. Because that's the only question right now. Is it possible for them to cap out this game? Because if the enemies, as we can see, go into the cap circle with both of them. Then they might actually be able to outrun the timer of the SDRV's cap. So Indignant Beaver does have to pay attention to that. But as we can see right now there's pretty much no threat whatsoever. Indignant Beaver does, does decide to go... Towards its cap circle to try and reset. But as we can see, even if there wouldn't be enemy enemy tanks into the cap circle anymore, he would have won. But that changes totally when one of the other enemy tanks joins the cap circle. So now Indignant Beaver has to kill one of these tanks to be able to win this game. So the T95 is in there. He has to kill the object 261. And then the timer of the cap of the enemy team will never run uh, out the timer of the SDRV's cap. So pretty much game secured right there with that killing shot on the object 261 there's no way this t95 is going to win this anymore so very well played the game is already secured uh, there's no way that t95 is ever going to make it back the only way they could lose this right now is if the fcrv goes out of the cap circle but he does look like a very competent player as well and he's not going to do that so i think the beaver is just going to play with his food right now which is just fantastic, I think. This is absolutely not needed. The game is already secured as the SDRV manages to cap out this game. What a beautiful, beautiful game by Indignant Beaver here. Showing off that you can win any outnumbered situation if you just have a little bit of luck and a little bit of team play. Let's take a look at the post-game stats, everyone. So Indignant Beaver, just to summarize, I wanted to feature your replay for a few reasons. One of them being I don't see many good light tank games on the map Arctic region. Furthermore, your team played together with the SCRV and the Waffentrager Panzer 4 in the mid game which is absolutely ridiculous. And lastly, this was just not the typical light tank replay that I expected it to be. You started off doing some passive spotting in the middle of the map, but what I didn't expect was the absolute rampage that followed. The last reason for featuring your replay is just that you are a really good player. And I think a lot of my viewers and a lot of people out there can take a lot from what you've done in this game. 
And therefore I want to thank you so much for sending this one to me. I really did enjoy watching this replay. In the description down below you can find some links of Indignant Beaver. I will put his Twitter and his YouTube channel down there so you can take a look at those. And if this sparked anyone's interest of sending in a replay yourself, I will show you in the screen right now what you need to do to send in your replays. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I did making it. I hope to be uploading more frequently in the future, but unfortunately again, no promises. I hope you guys liked this video, please leave a like as I did put a lot of time into making this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, I will see each and every one of you in the next video. Bye!